Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshina. I am gonna be sharing all of the books that I read in December. I read quite a mix, but also a lot of Christmas books. So I think I'm gonna start with all of the non-Christmas books and then at the end, I'll do all the Christmas books. So I read a couple non-Christmas books because at the very beginning of December, I was still in my class. So I was reading a couple books for that. And then I was already currently reading some non-Christmas books as well. So I'll just get the textbook out of the way. I did end up reading Who Are the Evangelicals? And I actually forget the author. I feel like it's Derek Tidball. I think that's whatever. I'll put the cover. Um, so this is a textbook technically, but it read like a Christian nonfiction for me. He basically broke down the history of evangelicalism and how like Christians within Christianity um, have like gone towards the evangelical way of living out their faith and then how it looks like in churches, in families, in your personal life, the good and the bad. So I just found it so interesting because I don't tend to hear much about like modern Christianity. I, for me personally, I hear a lot about like the early church and like how Jesus lived and stuff in the Bible. But for the like more modern development of Christianity, especially in North America, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just not as educated in it. So this book really gave me a good overview and I just really enjoyed reading it. I read the whole thing because I just wanted to know more and so yeah I really loved it I would recommend it if that sounds good to you so then I did read piercing the darkness by Frank E Peretti I had done a little read-along with this book and it really made the experience so much more special so thank you if you read it along with me I have a whole reading vlog discussing this book so I will link that down below and I loved this I was surprised by how much I loved it because this present darkness was so amazing for me like it opened up my world to how prayer affects things and what's going on in the spiritual realm when we pray and so all of that was like fresh in my mind when I was reading this book and it just really made a bigger impact because I was like excited to read about it then and just seeing how the characters interacted with each other and then also how their prayers impacted the spiritual realm. I was just fascinated by it and so encouraged and in particular one of the main characters is a woman who like grew up in the church a little bit. She went to Sunday school but then in college she got deep into mysticism and meditation and psychics and possession and stuff like that and it totally messed her up and just seeing her process of coming back to her childhood faith and meeting Jesus and just how the demons played a role in her life but and the angels did too and just the the sovereignty of God in her life I just really related to it and it really really encouraged me so it was pretty intense at times but I like that I like when books especially about faith go that like more gritty intense direction because it's real life you know I know that it's real and so it just matters to me a lot and I really loved reading it in this book so definitely recommend this book it was amazing five stars so I also read they turned the world upside down by Charles Martin this is a nonfiction and it's kind of a follow-up to his first nonfiction which is called what if it's true I loved what if it's true that was five stars this one got four stars because I felt like it was a little long and maybe I just wasn't quite in the space to like consume all that he was saying but he went pretty deep into the book of Acts and every aspect that Acts could teach us about how to live as a Christian and basically what he's saying is if we believe in the same Jesus that the disciples did, then we should be able to do the things that the disciples did, meaning cast out demons, um, heal people, like all of the bigger miracles that the disciples were a part of um, after Jesus ascended. And he was just very specific about that. And I totally respect it. I totally think that it's, that it's true and that he's right. But at the same time, because it, this whole book was about that and he was like really, really encouraging the reader to 
stop and reflect and ask God, like, how do you want me to respond to this? And it just didn't quite resonate the same way that What If It's True did. There were definitely some chapters though that were exactly what I needed to hear. And what I love is at the end of every chapter, he has like a fairly long prayer written out um, so that it's like, if we read it, it's like we're saying it. So he says like I and stuff in it. And so I really appreciated that because I feel felt like I could personalize it. Definitely very passionate and I respect that, but I didn't like super connect with it, I guess. So anyways, still thought it was great though. Gave it four stars. So next I want to talk about His Love Revealed by Cynthia Heron. This is book two to a series or trilogy that a publisher sent me um, as an ebook. So this is the second book and I really enjoyed this one. Probably a step more than the first book, so that was great. I read the first book in November, it's called Her Hope Discovered, and so this is book two, His Love Revealed. And I really enjoyed it. It's set in kind of a smaller town, and for this one it follows two characters that you met in the first book, and it's the woman who owns like the diner kind of in the town, and then her cook. So they're, you know, co-workers, and they also grew up together, and she actually had feelings for him and she told him when they were teenagers, but he rejected her. But they stayed friends kind of and he ended up working for her, so that's their story. It's just really cute how their relationship develops throughout the book. And then what I found was the most impactful is after the girl was rejected, she actually went to another guy and she started dating him and they she got pregnant, but she didn't tell anyone. So that is kind of like the secret that she's holding on to throughout the whole book and the thing that she has to forgive herself for and then like tell someone about and, and tell the guy because he does love her and they both still love each other but there's a lot of fear there and just like unspoken whatever. I just found it such a quality relationship to read about and I really enjoyed it. It was just like, it's pretty wholesome too. And anyways, I just really enjoyed it. I was very pleasantly surprised. So I would definitely recommend starting this series. Then the next book is A Change in Tune by Ashley Rescott. This was sent to me by the author. So thank you, Ashley. And this is a YA new adult kind of book that follows three musicians. They are all like students together. Um, the two are sisters and then there's the guy and he, this guy likes this girl pretty sure that's I'm getting that right but she is very like focused and she kind of only cares about music at that at the beginning and so he is like trying to you know get through to her so there's that it was very cute to read about but then there's a huge music aspect to this book as well so they play the violin and the cello and the guy's mom is their teacher so they are you know, navigating lessons and um, self-esteem and stuff like that. And then they are also in, I think, a competition to get a scholarship to go to a really prestigious music school. And they all want it, but they're all entering. And so, yeah, it's just like following all of that. There's a little bit of family drama as well. It is clean and I enjoyed it. So I'd recommend this one too. The last non-Christmas book, I actually DNF'd. It's The Girl Who Could Breathe Underwater by Erin Bartels. Yeah, this is an arc. It comes out January 4th. So actually, I guess it's already out now. I forget when this video is going up, but right now it's not January 4th yet. So yeah, I got an arc and I was so intrigued by it. The cover intrigued me, the description intrigued me, but the execution wasn't there, man. I was very confused and bored. So it follows a girl who's an author and her grandpa passes away. So this girl goes to her grandpa's cabin to try to break through her writer's block because her new book is due in like three months and she hasn't written a thing and she has no ideas and she's really struggling with that. She kind of thinks that the reason is that she got like a letter that was like pretty insulting to her last book and so it really like broke her confidence and it sounds like it's someone she knows so she's like someone is like telling me that I'm a fraud and that I shouldn't be a writer and so that like really shook her. She gets to the cabin and it's just nothing happened like slow things were happening. I got I think like 35 or 40 percent into it. It was really interesting because it was written in second person so it, it was written so that this author girl 
was writing a letter to her best friend who lives across the lake. Um, they grew up together and they were best friends. So the whole time it's like she's writing her life and what's going on at the cabin to this best friend. So that was interesting, but after a while it got annoying because it just felt like, cause every time something would happen, she would like s kind of side talk to the best friend about whatever and the past and stuff. And I just found it like not that great to read. And then this uh, translator comes because her first book was a huge success and they want to translate it into German. So this German translator comes and I really liked him. He was the one character that I really liked and he like spiced it up a little bit, but they were so awkward together. And it was like really awkward to read about it. And I couldn't tell if there was supposed to be a romance there because then she has like a history with her best friend's brother. Just all of it was like very, Ugh, I just was not into it. I don't know. So I don't want to like rag on it. I think like it could be someone's perfect book because it's very odd and I don't know like but just not for me. That's for sure. I just was like, what is the point of this? I don't want to read this anymore. So yeah, um, I DNF'd it and that is too bad. But let's go on to the Christmas books and let's drink some coffee. Okay, so for the Christmas books, I actually have a whole video reviewing almost all of the Christmas books that I read in December. So I'll link that video down below. So I won't go into too much detail in the books here. I'll just like kind of share my thoughts. So the first one is Mistletoe Between Friends by Samantha Chase. Uh, this was the first one that I read and I actually DNF'd it <laughs> because it was, just wasn't clean. There wasn't any described scenes, but it got pretty close. And I did like the writing, but I think I'm not gonna be reading from this author anymore. Then I reread The White Christmas Inn by Colleen Wright. Loved it again. I'm really glad that a lot of you also read it. I saw a lot of people saying that you read it because of me. So I'm very happy because yes, it is such a gem and I really wanna find more Christmas books like that. So good. But yeah, I did read that and it was really good. I loved it. Then I read The Bridge by Karen Kingsbury. This was a recommendation by a subscriber. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. I would say that the relationship brought it down for me but the faith was excellent so you know they kind of evened out I gave it four stars I would definitely recommend it actually and I heard there's a movie for it so I might try to look that up and watch the movie then I read Snow Angel Cove by Rayanne Thane and I really enjoyed this one too it was super good it was clean and it just was a really sweet story it wasn't like top notch but like super close because you know it was very Christmassy they were kind of snowed in in this like mansion cabin thing and the romance was just really cute so definitely enjoyed that one I'm gonna continue with this series I've read like books all out of order within this I think it's Haven Point series maybe or I don't know anyways I do want to continue um, reading through this author so I'm excited about that okay and we're at the last one Snowbound at Christmas by Debbie Mason. I also have a vlog where I reviewed this, so I'll link that down below. But I enjoy this one, but it's a little bit misleading, especially the title and the, like the title and the book. The title and the back make it sound like it's gonna be about something that it is like one little part of it, you know? So first of all, Snowbound at Christmas. I thought they were gonna be stuck somewhere, snowed in, no. That like never happens, so sad about that. And then the back makes it sound like for the most part, like most of the book, the two sisters swap and stay swapped, but that happens like in the middle and then is over and it, it's like not even the main part of the book, but that's like the only thing that's described on the back. So I was a little bit like, oh, okay, whatever. Cause it, that was fine, like whatever, but just so you know, if you're like looking at this book, it's not about what you think. So I, but I really enjoyed it. It was very funny. This had a lot of humor in it. A lot of kind of like suggestive language. So be aware of that, but it was clean, but just suggestive language about how much they are attracted to each other, you know? And this is actually more so a mystery, trying to find out who's trying to kill one of the sisters. And I really enjoyed that part and then just the interactions were great like overall it was told really well but it, it just was presented in kind of like not a clear way I guess but I would still recommend it this was pretty good so there we go that's all that I read in December <laughs> I talked a lot about those books but I kind of want to you know be as thorough as I can with my reviews and 
that's what I did. So thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. I will link down stuff below if you want to see more, and I'll write all of the books and authors down below too. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye!